Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome back for the second night in a row for a Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition actual play live stream here on Twitch. This is Crit and Miss. My name is Sven Westcamp, and you are watching 50 Shades of Grey Matter, a custom D&D one-shot uh, that I wrote myself. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those ones that I, that I put together in the night and then sort of adjusted and adjusted. Uh, I've had another group play this uh, this particular one shot already, and they came up with a, uh, a very interesting conclusion. Christian, you would be uh, used to these kinds of things when you sort of have one idea about how things are going to go, and uh, the players come up with a, a completely different thing. So you've got to improvise and uh, give them a satisfactory conclusion. And I think it actually worked out really well. Suddenly the bard casts banishment, and you need to add a new BBEG. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm uh, not going to lie. When I, when I ran Hellbreaker a few weeks ago, I had one of the players try i think three times to cast yeah. banishment on my uh, on my big bad evil guy luckily he did not he was not successful just because of the ridiculously high uh saving throws that my uh, my pit fiend had but um i tell you what he had me sweating i was sweating <laughs> because if it works that would have been it that would have been <laughs> the most anticlimactic <laughs> ending to a campaign called hellbreaker that you can uh think of like does hell break? Nope. Bye. <laughs> well, you broke hell. Um, congratulations. You, not only did you break hell, but you also broke my campaign and a little bit of my heart just chipped away. So, uh, But look, guys, I, uh, I'm not Crit and Miss. Crit and Miss is a community. So I don't live stream just on my own because no one would watch that. No one wants to hear this voice for four and a half hours straight. They want to hear other people and they want to see these other beautiful faces. So uh, I am going to th go through all of the players tonight, one by one, introduce them. Uh, they're going to introduce themselves, maybe uh, for new listeners or watchers, maybe say just a, a, a brief little thing about themselves, what they do or something like that, and uh, their character's name, name only, no class, no race, any of that stuff, already gone over it, and you'll get a chance later to do that. So just your name, your character's name, maybe a little bit about yourself, and uh, we'll just uh, dive straight into it after that. Not too much uh, banter tonight. Um, let's start with our, our, our very special returning guest for tonight. Well, of course, we uh, we have Christian from Hermes D and D Services. Good evening, Christian. How are you? I am alive again. I've had some sleep after BrizzCon and uh, getting ready for a lot of things. Tomorrow is my uh, my partner's twenty fifth birthday. It's Mamma Mia themed. Uh, shout out, Jess. Love you. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, no, otherwise it's not been too bad. Um, we've got Jasper's week coming up, planning all of that with um, people auctioning for the the seats um, for a couple of people, dif um, different people with um, Ardent Roleplay and Meeples, uh, dra Meeples and Dragons. Um, and then obviously I've got the lovely Grey Matter tonight and then also the Critical Conversation coming up uh, in a week's time as well um with Sven here so uh, a lot of awesome people um, and a lot of awesome shows uh things happening but i will be playing um ku klein um just like the um irish mytho um little anime boy basically uh, fighting everyone himself and i am a gem born dragon one of the new uh races of dragon born from the fizzbands treasury so i'm keen yeah. Would you say keen as mustard? More keen than mustard? Slightly less keen than mustard? Or uh... I would say slightly. Le I don't really like mustard. I don't like mustard either. I I, I really don't like mustard. Um, it I'm as keen, keen as I peanut like mustard. butter. As, as not, peanut butter. So yeah, I... not not as keen as the sort of cast in third edition. <laughs> I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm definitely as keen. I'm, I'm as keen as if it's going to be a condiment peanut butter. That's that's me. Uh, on the on the subject of, uh, of of condiments, I am uh, I, I'm Dutch. Who has mayonnaise with their chips? Has anyone done that? Yes. Yeah. Mayonnaise, uh, especially if you have a fish with it. Mayonnaise with chips. Nani, repeat. Yeah. 
Mayonnaise, mayonnaise with, with chips. With chips. Had like aioli what? with like wedges and on stuff. on bread oh, as well. Like straight sandwiches, up, man. Straight on up bread? hot chips, mayonnaise. But in Holland no, they have a man. they have a yeah. very special type of mayonnaise that they call frites sauce, and you have that with your chips, and it is oh, beautiful. Yum. Even better. Get some mayonnaise, get some tomato sauce, uh, or some ketchup, whatever you want to call it. Chop up some onions, put that together, have that with your chips, and you'll die happy. Um, I am going to try that. You need to try that. It is. Uh, I will not. <laughs> it's called Patatje uh, Oorlog in Dutch, and um, that roughly translates uh, to chips war. So, I saw... Uh, fast food um, on a, a little video lately from the Netherlands and that whole sort of area in Europe and it was hard brown bread with salmon and tuna on top um, and that was it yep that's that's class you know what I've had in the past I, I used to live in the, I used to live in the Netherlands on the on the lake called the Iselmeer and it was completely chock a block full with the Dirty big great eels, uh, and they would uh, they would have this 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 festival. Um, it was like right next to what used to be the, uh, um, you know, on on the port, the customs in like the 1500s or something like that. So it basically, looks like a big castle, and they would have it in the field around that, and they would get all the eels, and um, they get big barrels and fill them up with particular types of wood and smoke the eels right there, and like they'd just be hanging there on sticks getting smoked and then you would uh you'd eat the whole eel just like that beautiful okay moving on <laughs> all right yeah. who is next now that i've uh, i've uh, grossed you all out um who's next i'll, um, I'll stick to me vegemite thanks this uh yeah. this lovely bearded gentleman uh down below me and uh, to my whatever that is, right, left, I don't know. Uh, uh, Mark, uh, you enjoyed some of his music on the Starting Soon screen uh, hey. just before. So this is him in the flesh. Mark, how are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Oh, I mean, where do I even start? Let's not get into that. Let's just let's okay. just hear okay. more about you before I start following right. on again. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I, I'm Mark Hillman. I uh, am a local muso and uh, sometimes been up down the coast and stuff doing some fun stuff. Um, I'm regular on Crit and Miss, on Out of the Abyss, I play Serethel, the Paladin. He didn't die! It was close though. I'm real happy. <laughs> it was close. It was he very close. Yet. It was, that was, that was, that was tense. Thanks um, to tonight, one of those. Uh, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, tonight I will be playing Kevrol. He's a bit of an enigma. No one really knows much about him other than he's really big. And uh, that's the easiest way to, to write a character for a one shot. <laughs> no one knows anything about it. He's a blank slate, and I can play him. However, the I mean, I mean, I, I mean, this other bearded fella's character knows knows a bit about him, but that that'd be about it. What if they know each other? Beautiful segue. Let's go to the next beautiful bearded gentleman uh, on tonight's stream. Jeff, how are you? Who are you going to be playing? I am Jurgen Cracker Cannavale. But you can just call me Doc Hovel, everyone else does. And, um, well, I am a great and mighty smiter of evil and, um, turner of the wicked. And I look forward to hitting some things with my gigantic hammer. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what I wrote on my, uh, you know, that, uh, school newspaper thing that you write in, uh, at, yeah. at the end of uh, grade yeah. 12. I'm pretty sure that's, uh, pretty close to what I write. Um, <laughs> you're the great thing. I love it. Where do I see You're myself in 20 years? Uh, I see myself as a great and mighty uh, warrior, and I want to hit things with my warhammer. I think pretty, that's, it may not be word for word, so don't quote me, but it's, it's pretty close. Uh, Where do you see yourself in five years? Yeah. With warhammer, a euphemism, Sven. Uh, sorry? Was warhammer a euphemism for something? Um, well, no, uh, sadly, I, I, I still haven't added a, a, a Warhammer to my measly collection, but uh, no, when I say Warhammer, I mean well, Warhammer. Well, something to get through armor. I, I say exactly what I mean. Um, if I don't use euphemisms. I, I, I just get straight to the point. Nice. <laughs> euphemisms just confuse people. Um, speaking of euphemisms, Grace, how are you tonight? What? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have any other segue. You very confused. <laughs> um, See, told you. What am I a euphemism for? 
I don't know. People. I don't know. It's the only segue yeah, that you I had. Listen for Moonbeam. I I, I didn't yeah, listen to anything well, anyone that, else said. That, yeah. So all I heard was euphemism. I, I mean, was like, okay, we'll use that. The, I mean, that would be pretty much the only way people would know me, the Moonbeam chick that nuked herself. Um, <laughs> I remember that. It was a good time. Yeah, me too. It well, was I mean, good time. I I I'm not gonna lie, I. I would like to go through all of the games, all the all of the sessions that you've been a part of, and calculate how much damage you've done to uh, opponents, and how much damage you've either done to yourself and allies, and actually see which one's greater. Because last session, you actually did more damage uh, to allies than you did to actual opponents, I think. I'll have to double check that, go back and watch it again. But you did the same amount of uh, bludgeoning damage to yourself, and you hit him. Yeah, so that pushes you over the amount of damage that you actually did to opponents. So, but that but is my honestly, kind of I feel like <laughs> I feel like Thrash really should be chaotic evil. But um, anyway, uh, my name is Grace. I am a regular here on Crit and Miss. I used to play Druids, but now I play WWE barbarians that hit everyone. Um, and I am living my best life. <laughs> Look, uh, I mean, I, it's just it's so in character what uh, what thrash did it just lives up to her name she's she's not uh not worried about her own well-being or anything like that she there's she's all impulse is what i'm getting so far from thrash and you you've played that perfectly. yeah and you get uh, you get inspiration and when i jumped off that i know and when i jumped off the wall all i saw in my head was just john cena pile driving someone and i was like yep that's thrash john cena with a tail <laughs> John Cena with a tail. Um, <laughs> John Cena with a tail. I, I think that that's probably gonna it's probably gonna happen. What uh, the next uh, Dungeons and Dragons movie starring uh, John Cena as uh, as Thrash the Troublesome? <laughs> I could see that man. He would nail that. Role. <laughs> he would. <laughs> I was never a fan of wrestling, um, so never a fan of John Cena's. But uh, I've got to admit, I quite like the guy now. Um, he's quite uh quite just funny. know him from the tiktok song um the you know john cena da, 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 da. that's literally my whole thing <laughs> that's like how i know him let's have a look all right so i think uh i think everyone knows enough about us i think it's time to to know a little bit more about this uh, this game we're going to play. And uh, the only way you're going to find out about this game is if we just dive headfirst into it, like a party of adventurers diving into a pool of water 140 feet below in the complete darkness while three of them are still unconscious. <laughs> That's the only way yeah. to learn. <laughs> it's just diving in headfirst. Oh, look, my, uh, my brother's joined about, us in the Stan. chat. Hey, Westy, how you doing, my friend? Um... So who's ready to, to play some Dungeons and Dragons? And we'll see how far we get tonight. And uh, might be yeah. all righty. Uh, let me just uh, get some music going for those people listening at uh, or watching at home. Um, if you're if you're watching the stream, guys, or, or listening back on Spotify or anything like that, I'm going to be playing some ambience. Unfortunately, due to uh, bandwidth uh, limitations, I cannot share that with my players, so they're not going to be able to hear it. But, you know, they're not important. You guys are more important than they are. I'm joking. That's that's not true. Don't don't quote me on that. Ouch. Everyone is equally important. <laughs> um, no, but I, I can still play the, the ambient music and the ambient sound effects for you guys. So, so you will be able to hear it, those watching the stream. Unfortunately, I, I could not share it with my players without the whole thing coming crashing down. Um, so... You just wait for the chaos we're going to cause, Finn. The whole thing is going to come yeah. crashing down regardless. So let's just uh, let's uh, get some marshmallows and some sticks and uh, let's roast some marshmallows on the fire that is this stream uh, after you guys get into your first uh, role-playing encounter because you are going to burn this house down with these characters. Um, all right, let's make sure that's not too loud. Sound too bad, uh, guys. If you're uh, if you're in the chat, if that's too loud, let me know because I have no idea. It looks like it's fine, but I 
never know. Or if you can't hear it, let me know. Um, but anyway, we open up on a sky turned orange and purple as the sun begins to descend behind the peaks of a mountain range. We pan across and we see coming into view an idyllic village set into a valley. Rows of vibrant fruit trees surrounded uh, by farmlands dotted with, uh, with cottages billowing smoke from dozens of chimneys. We continue to pan across and in the center of the town we can see a large stone church. Its roof is completely covered in healthy green grass. It's the largest building in the village. And still we continue to pan across. And we see more farmland, small figures moving about. Most of the traffic heading back towards town at the end of the day. We continue to pan. On the outskirts of this peaceful village, we see in the distance four figures as they trudge along a dusty trail. We zoom in slowly on the four, revealing more detail as we go. And eventually we're able to make out their features. Leading this party is... Who is leading this party, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, who is leading this party? <laughs> I, I thought it was you. That's what I was going to say. I feel like from the, the little backstory thing you wrote, it kind of sounds like Ginger's uh, leader leader. Okay, Ginger's in charge then. Um, so, I guess leading this party, you see a fae. No more than 100 centimeters. So very, very tiny. Everyone else is towering over her. Um, and she's just up in the air. Like, she prefers to fly rather than walk. Who doesn't? Um, and she has no idea where she's going. She is just following everyone else from in front. Um, so. All right. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> um, so uh, you're, I'd say, probably just a couple of feet off the ground, sort of flying along. Not uh, not 120 yeah. feet up or something like that. Yeah, cool. All right. No. So just above the roads, um, just... I'm gonna say gracefully flying along. No. Uh, That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Give yourself um, inspiration wait, for that. Span. Hold on, I, I, I have something I can play here that's perfect for this. Uh, so I'm the... taking psychic damage IRL. Where's my <laughs> quick roll of sleeve? Uh, yeah. I need... I was, I'd go into a rage to resist the damage, but it's the only kind of damage I can't resist. <laughs> Oh, I uh, earlier on I had a da dum cha sound effect, uh, but that was on the that was on the online one and uh, not on the offline one. So unfortunately, I can't play your da dum cha. So I'm just going to have to rely on uh, Mark's musical on. talents to to get us that. All right, just uh, hang hang I wait around you. for ten minutes while uh, while we sort out the da dum cha. <laughs> the da dum cha. <laughs> All right, here we go, live on air for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Hillman. There you go. Didn't hear it. Ah. Uh, <laughs> no. it. Oh, I can see oh, it. Oh, <laughs> useless. It is not no. registering that at all. Wow. Not, not that's a thing. More, no, no, no. That's, that's more really... impressive than um. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. crazy. Sad. I need that's, that um, kind of technology so you can't hear like, all like my, the, uh, This punches. is an old Behringer C1 condenser, like entry level condenser microphone. Like it's super sensitive, really close to it, like this. But get back here, yeah. and you probably can't hear me very well. That's that's really well. Mm. Crazy thing is, we can hear your voice just fine, but absolutely couldn't hear that at all. So let's just imagine the didum cha in our heads, because this is D and D, and that's uh, that's what we're good at doing. We're imagining things. Um, yes, we don't like our lives. Of we the mind. Our you know what it might be? <laughs> it might actually be um, Discord's noise suppression. Because it's got a fancy noise suppression engine that might pick up those knock noises as things it doesn't want to let through. Well, it certainly doesn't do that for my keyboard. Um, <laughs> for mine. <laughs> who, who is uh, who is following along behind this uh, this little fairy uh, as you are travelling along the road? Uh, Probably the great big huge armoured paladin. Yeah. 
carrying his uh, hammer over his shoulder, armored from head to toe. Uh, Wearing his mask, so probably COVID safe. Uh, <laughs> mask, Full face helmet, and all. On. Okay. Metal mask and then a little fabric on over the outside of the metal armor. <laughs> Not gonna lie, guys. When you rock up to the uh, to the tavern tonight, there will be a little uh, a little scanning thing that you have to scan with your phone and do the little check in Queensland before you go into the with, tavern. Without what? And the barkeeper will be checking that shit. All right. So without 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 what? With your with your um, medieval uh, smartphone. Oh. Oh. With your fancy it's, it's like it, it's etched into your sword and you just like whack the person at the door and like oh. how many like whack marks are on his armor how many people checked in oh, yeah, that's, that could work. and then you heal him on your way out and then you heal him on your way out but just that spot uh, it sucks if you don't have any healing magic, Andy. Um, yeah. You could knock the guy unconscious and go into death saving throws, and you can't do uh, can't do a damn thing. But hey, uh, I, I guess I guess you just need to have a uh, potion of healing on you if, if you go into that tavern, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, I suppose you do. Uh, so we have Jurgen, this uh, towering um, this towering mountain of uh, of heavy armor, uh, following along after this dainty small fairy as she uh, gracefully flies along after that who do we have next I'm guessing uh, Jürgen's friend would be beside him I mean maybe but I also tend to sort of like stick to the sides and the shadows as much as I can and I, I'll I get in the, you know like yes yeah, so I'm sort of like just maybe floating off towards the back um, keeping an eye on the group kind of thing um, and yes yeah, so I'm just like I'm almost as tall as him, but like just a few inches shorter, but no armor. It's all um, mostly I'm um, wrapped in like bandage rag style things for the most part. Um, baggy, loose, um, all dark colors though, like it's they've been stained black um, or grays, whatever I can manage. Um, and then like baggy pants with like a rope belt, but then some really nice strappy boots that look kind of flash and a, um, a long long dark coat that and gloves a hood goggles and then a cloth mask like you can't see my face at all you guys probably know what's underneath it but i don't really let anyone else see it and i don't talk much good 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 so we have two covid safe uh characters we're setting a good example um and last <laughs> but uh definitely not least uh we have kuka lane uh, uh yeah uh walking I, I guess by the sounds of it in front of um the roguish fella um and bis beside the uh paladin is a uh, purple um gem dragonborn uh armor is fairly non-existent um just studded leather um but otherwise minimal just covering different areas uh and uh, yeah a couple of um purple amethyst gems floating around are the two horns uh, as the kind of hair for gem dragons, uh, more or less, um, with a, um, a wand in, on the hilt on the right side and a rapier on the hilt on the left side. Um, uh, not super tall, um, only six foot three, so tall compared to obviously an elf, um, but compared to the other two, not insane. Um, just slowly uh, walking along, taking in all the sights. So this is a party just not designed to blend into the crowd. You have a fairy, no. an armoured behemoth, a, uh, uh, a, a, a roguish large humanoid who keeps his features completely covered in rags and, and masks and all this kind of stuff, and a, uh, a purple dragon person with gems floating around his head. It's safe to say that you're not going to blend into your surroundings, particularly not in a rustic, idyllic village like the one. They have to be able to see me to notice that, that you guys are approaching. Just thought I'd check. It's not anywhere around Halloween, is it? Um, not that I know of, uh, in, mm. unless it. That would have made benefit. things easier. I mean, can we roll a d12 to see what month it is? <laughs> and then roll a d20 and a d10 to see what day it is? 
<sighs> yeah, well, I mean, if this is the kind of details uh, that we want to get, the, get stuck into, sure. Then let's you roll, should have been prepared for this. Let's roll a d12. <laughs> yeah. I it's thought June. time of day was good enough. Rough time of day was uh, enough detail for a one shot. But no, let's uh, <laughs> let's figure out exactly what time it is, uh, right down to the very last detail. It's it's June twenty eighth. Okay. Damn it. All right. So <laughs> June twenty. Oh, so we just missed Easter. We just missed Easter. Yeah, um, as you're uh, passing some of the, the farmlands, you can see hidden poorly in a bush is a half-melted chocolate Easter egg that one of the kids must have uh, not been able to find. True Colleen with his dragonborn teeth and whatnot, just ripping a rabbit to shreds in his mouth as he's walking into town. There's a little four-year-old sitting... Really is it um so is it is it daytime or nighttime? Uh no, it is it is daytime, but it's very late yeah. in the day. The sun right. is just starting to set. If there wasn't a mountain range uh in the in the in the distance, you'd still have probably you know an hour or, or two or something like that. Uh, more yeah. sunlight than you do at the moment. You you probably still got a couple of hours, but it's just you know the mountains are there, so it's starting to dip behind the mountains and just cast this whole scene in this beautiful orange purple hue there's some lazy clouds that are sort of drifting by it's almost too idyllic uh, have we been to this place, town dun, before dun, dun, dun. i don't know you have you uh mm -hmm. you guys have worked together i think we've uh, we've sort of established mm -hmm. that you were uh, you were mercenaries uh together at least um, Jürgen Kukulain, um, whatever your character's name, uh, Kevrol. was, Kevrol, that's it. Um, and once you, when you left, check. you met, um, this fairy, Ginger, uh, and yep. you guys, uh, have been working together for, I don't know how long now, so you, you tell me, do you, have you been this way before or have you not? Well, I don't know. What do we reckon? Uh, Ku Klein's done a bit of traveling because um, apparitions obviously aren't always just in the one spot like beasts and whatnot So I travel mm -hmm. around to wherever is needed. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you I rolled a history check and got an 11. Um, yeah, I got an 8. So I, I don't think I'm gonna know this place that well So I might have I'm, passed through here, but probably not done work here. Yeah So what I'm thinking anyway. which might be kind of standard operating procedure is that the moment we get to a point where I can get to be out of sight and get a little bit ahead of the group and just like have a little bit of an advanced suss out of the town, make sure we're not walking into any obvious trouble straight away. All right. Yeah, sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a little uh, Crit and Miss logo on the map here for you guys. Um, cool. That will represent uh, your current location. And yep. uh, since uh, since Ginger is the leader of this party, is the, the de facto leader, uh, I'm going to let uh, Grace uh, be the one to move that around if she can. Are you able to move that, Grace? Mm -hmm. Do you see it pop up? I yes, yes, I can move yes, it. Yes, you can. There you go. So you are approaching this village. Uh, from the west, uh, traveling towards the east. Um, let me have a quick look at your guys' history checks. A 7, and 8, and a 12. It's not great. Um, I'd say your, um, the, way you, the, the way you read your role, Christian, is pretty accurate. You've probably passed uh, through this village before, but had no reason to, to stop, to stay, uh, and, and learn anything about the area. Um, Kevrol and um, Ginger, you guys probably haven't been here before. Um, there I'm is a, maybe I've a, heard of it, but there's a main like road vaguely. which skirts along the mountain range, uh, which is generally where most of the traffic travels along. This is sort of a little bit out of the way, but you can travel through this valley um, to get places like a bit of a shortcut and maybe avoiding some taxes by traveling the, the road less travel as it were um so not not as much traffic uh so probably had no reason to be here. especially as mercenaries this is a, a quiet sort of village all right so so j just just to clarify i'm probably ranging about 20 feet ahead of the group now and i'm stealthing as best i can all right well i'll tell you what 
let's have the first roll of the evening. Let's uh, let's roll some stealth. And, uh, All right. Stealth roll. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. All right. 22. Thirteen plus nine. That's not too bad. Um, I'm gonna do a little roll here. Um, well, no, no one's really looking for you guys, or are they? Maybe they dun, are. Dun, dun, dun. Who don't needs see, uh, You don't see many people. <laughs> um, just uh, maybe some farmers uh, finishing up for the day. You walk past uh, the field to the south. Wow, that dice roll is going very, very slowly. Uh, you, you, you walk past <laughs> a, a field. It's, it's on your right as you're heading into the village. Uh, you can see a, a guy sort of... Uh, leaning on a shovel and uh he's got like a big slouch hat and he sort of wipes his brow and he uh doesn't see you apparently uh Kevrol, but he does see the rest of you and uh you can see him watch you as you walk by just how far away are we you're 50 feet away he's out in the field okay I flip him off. No. <laughs> no, just keep walking into town. He instantly turns into a demon. <laughs> Roll initiative. Roll for initiative. This is one big battle, ladies and gentlemen. Four hours of combat. Um, no, you're uh, you're you're good. You guys, you know, you continue walking. Um, maybe if you look his way, he might, uh, you know, tip his hat to you as you as you walk by. But you continue unaccosted. Um, and the open fields sort of give way to more clustered farmhouses as you pass over um, a small stone bridge which uh, crosses a small creek which is fed by a waterfall somewhere uh, past another farm to the north. You can see there's a small lake uh, to your south as you're heading in towards the village and uh, up ahead of you maybe you know 40 feet something like that in the further up you can see there's the main square of town there's a a large oak tree in the middle of town its branches spread quite wide and you can see um, small uh, decorations hanging from the tree that uh, gently blowing in the breeze um, Easter decorations Easter decorations lovely um, <laughs> Easter decorations um, very good <laughs> bright what have I started <laughs> eggs uh, hanging from ribbons and they're blowing gently uh, in the wind and I'm going to hang the um the rabbit that I was gnawing on on a branch <laughs> Stop it, you're bringing back bad memories for me, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, on the far, no, I'll, we'll get into that later. Um, just remind me, you know, it's a fun story. Uh, at the, on, the, on the far side of this, uh, of this large oak tree, you can see that, uh, that, that big stone church that I described earlier. Its uh, roof is covered in like a thick blanket of, uh, of luscious green buffalo grass um, it has these big arches supporting the sides of the buildings that have these wooden lattices like nailed into the stonework itself that have these uh, beautiful vines growing up along them um, and they're sort of um, covered in these brightly colored uh, multicolored flowers um, you know, which sets the scene, you know, it's quite serene. Um, on your left, you can see a tavern. Uh, let's see if I can bring my notes up in the next half an hour. See, the notes are working fine. It's just the dice roll that's taken forever. Um, yes, let's have a look. So you can see this, this tavern, it's a rustic, uh, single-story building. There's a rough-shod wooden sign bearing a depiction uh, of a man drinking from a mug seemingly covered in brambles uh, and there's written over the top of this shield shaped sign which is you know, you know moving back and forth in the, in the wind 
is the uh, the words the prickly patron. Inside, through some that wavy cylinder glass, you can see the glow of a of a fireplace. But you don't hear any voices coming from within the tavern. Uh, everybody, roll a perception check for me, actually. First group check for tonight. Eight. Oh, jeez, oh, nothing. Oh, Seven. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Jürgen. Oh, no. Fourteen. Dark. No, Eleven, sorry, not fourteen. Ugh. Anyone have a, Anyone have guidance? Did we forget about that at all, possibly? <laughs> I don't think I took that. <laughs> all right. Oh, God. We are the um, perceptive ones. That is what they call our adventuring group. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Your... <laughs> um, they call you guys Natural 20. That's the name of your adventuring party. You don't know why. It must have something to do with how the gods divvy out uh, responsibility and luck. But uh, no, you're standing sort of in this, um, you know, in, in, in the center of town, uh, right next to the tavern. The church is just across from this big uh, sort of oak tree in the middle of the town. And the only thing that you can hear is some dogs barking in the distance and um, the sound of the leaves as they rustle in the wind. Um, and that's really all I'm going to give you with those uh, absolute <laughs> shithouse rolls. Yeah, fair enough. So, uh, yeah. Kukulain yeah, is cool. going to um, uh, like look to his left, obviously, um, from the party here, Jürgen's to my right, um, and so I look to my left where there's like nothing. Uh, say something in deep speech, and then uh, turn back to the rest of you. And then like the telepathic communication that I've been communicating, um, not speaking, common by tongue. Uh, I just uh, I'm going to head to that um, large building there. Uh, looks like some sort of temple. Um, see what I can learn, uh, and I'm just going to start strutting off. Um, and to give a bit of a spring in my step, I'm going to cast just level one long strider and just quickly hurry off of there. All right. You guys, uh, you, you hear this voice in your head. You're familiar with this now, so it doesn't take you by surprise or anything like that. But uh, he then darts off towards this, uh, which is quite clearly some type of uh, place of worship. It's, it's not quite a cathedral. It's not that big, uh, but it is... It's obviously the largest building in town, um, and they've made no effort to, to hide that this is a religious sort of uh, structure. Uh, what do you guys want to do as he's sort of uh, splitting the party? Well, Ginger sort of looks around, and she's like, well, I mean, we probably should go with him. I mean, it would be very unpolite to just sort of let him go off on his own. Um, can I actually get you to roll a perception check, uh, Ginger? May I call yeah. you Ginger? I feel like that's offensive. Uh, I mean, you can... Ging is also acceptable, I suppose. <laughs> in, in the words of Tim Minchin, only a Ginger can call Three. another Ginger Ginger. Three. Uh, three. Okay. What? Well, I mean, you see, you see, um, Kukulain heading off towards this church. You see, uh, Jürgen still there, just uh, standing there in this. Uh... Oh, 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 something. Okay, never mind. Uh, you see, uh, Kuk uh, not Kukulain. Sorry, Jürgen still standing there, clad head to toe in this. Um, you can't see me for shit because uh -huh, your perception check didn't come near my stealth roll. That's what I was going to say. You have absolutely no idea what Kevroar is, but uh, maybe this is... Is this something that you guys... Uh, that you do often? She'd be used to that, Kevroar, yeah. like It's just pretty it? common when we get into a town, I would just like... I'm, I'm near the group, but I'm staying as hidden as possible to, you know, keep an eye out. Probably know that he's nearby somewhere. Now, um, Kukulain, uh, as you approach the stone steps leading up to this church um you walk beneath sort of like um i don't know what to call it like a veranda i suppose there's a big archway and you you step uh underneath it and you can see uh written quite plainly uh in common is just the church of shantea 
and uh, the, the door in, is I'll, slightly I'll cracked. Do it. It's got a big double door, big wooden doors uh, that are decorated and all these, um, you know, floral designs. And the door is slightly cracked, and from inside you can hear the sounds of many voices. It's a bit of a, a bit of a din coming from inside this church. Okay, I don't know who Shantae is. Uh, I've no <laughs> got a two on my check. Uh, but I'm just going to make my way in and look for, um, I guess, uh, areas where book des- books are kept. Um, yeah, any sort of library or place of learning. Um, that's sort of a, a thing that you're, your character's into, reading? It's a big... Uh, I'm a worshipper of um, uh, Kareska, um, the... Uh, dragon goddess of magic um, who's kind of like a vice versa side of Mistra, the god of magic um, and so yeah anything with arcane and learning and whatnot. she's the one person um, that Kukulain, um, or being I guess Kukulain, um, attempted to communicate with during his insanity well I mean every time I play in D&D I swear I learn about a new deity of some sort because I've never heard of that one before um it's doing my head in, but no, that's uh, that's great. Now you, you you make your way up to the steps. You can see that the door is slightly ajar. You can hear the sound of voices echoing from within. Um, maybe a little bit. It's not like people shouting or anything like that, but you can hear a lot of people talking at once. Uh, maybe some people sound a little bit more animated than others. Uh, what does the rest of you want to do? Just just do that quickly. Oh. I'll use um, oh, my no. cantrip gust with my Jedi forces and open the doors before I actually touch them. All right, so we'll pause it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Announcing my presence. You, you, can, you can continue now. What are, you, what are you guys doing while he's making his way up to this church? Um, so I guess Ginger, seeing that this is a place of worship, I mean, she's not an animal. She was like raised in a village of druids but she's not an animal so she just like lands she's not flying in there um but she just sort of looks in and she's like are we allowed to go in here i don't think we're allowed in here are we allowed and sort of looks like all the way up at him because he's like towering over her i'm pretty sure we should be able to go in let's do it Okay, we enter. Uh, Kevril, you're uh, you're keeping an eye on your on your comrades. You can all, you can see them all moving towards this uh, large stone church, covered in flowers yeah. and garlands. And even underneath these big stained glass windows, there's these uh, these flower pots hanging in like metal holders, and even there, like overflowing with uh, you know roses. All right. Um. I guess I'll, at this point, if we're going inside somewhere, I will um, drop stealth and follow them in, uh, rear guard styles, and just sort of hang around near the door and, you know, like, keep an eye on the situation but not get involved in whatever anyone's doing. Sensing his presence, I uh, say, remember, we need to be respectful. I just nod. Give me one second while I add something to my notes here. And uh, I will describe what happens as you enter this church. Ah, there we go. That's fun. All right. So you catch up with uh, Kuka Lane just as he cast his, uh, was it Burst of Wind or something? Yes, I, my Jedi powers. Your 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 Jedi powers. Like, boom. <laughs> the door. It's a. I, I imagine it a bit like um, the Witcher Three when you cast uh, the the push thing. Boom. Yes. And the um, it it forces the door open on like heavy iron hinges, and it 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 uh, it swings open, and it's like one of those uh, westerns when you know the wrong person walks into the. Uh, into the bar, or um, like a, a record scratch. Everyone just sort of stops. You can see there's um, maybe 20 to, to 30 people sort of uh, crowded uh, in this church. On either side, there's, there's rows of pews. Even the interior 
of this church is decorated with floral patterns as well as you know live flowers and and, and stuff like that um, all the way up against the back wall is this huge stained glass window that depicts a uh, uh, a lean but toned muscled uh, woman um, she's uh, she sort of has this air of not not just femininity but strength as well um, it's great artistry you can you can sort of get that from just looking at this big stained glass window and in front of it there's a, a small altar and there's a dwarven woman Everyone sort of parts, so you can see this uh, this dwarven woman, and everyone stops and just looks at you. And uh, there's a moment of silence. Does anyone want to do anything in this moment of silence? If not, I'll continue. Thistle just oh, we're not thistle. This is not a this is not um, a mug show. It's in stone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Ginger just sort of like looks up, and she's like. Um, we're sorry for interrupting, uh, just go back to whatever you were doing, we're really sorry. For a moment there's just almost like crickets. Beep, beep, beep. Purgle. And then Kuklain turns and starts walking to the left towards some of the bookcases. Everyone just sort of backs off. Um, as you uh, as you approach them, and yeah, you know what? There are some bookcases. There's sort of like a, an antechamber before you enter the church proper, and there's some there's some bookcases there. Um, when you get there, you have a quick peruse, uh, and you can obviously read common because you can speak common. You can see that most of them are common. Some of them are written in um, dwarvish. Um, I'm pretty sure halflings just speak common, or do they have their own language? They got their own language, don't they? Halfling, um, and they're mostly books about um, agriculture, growing crops. Uh, there's some books about uh, midwifery, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a moment of silence before the dwarven woman standing at the far end of the church cuts through that silence. Her voice is. Um, it's it's commanding yet soft. It, it it commands your attention without being aggressive. She says, "Welcome, newcomers. Of course, people of all sorts are welcome here in Stonewood. Shantae's blessing upon you, travelers. Welcome. Unfortunately, you've arrived at a dire time." I'm afraid we've been plagued by some trouble of late. We've been having a town meeting. There's another moment of silence. Well, we happen to be very good at dealing with some kinds of trouble. Perhaps we could help. She... Let me give the thumbs up from my bookcase. No, it's your... You can't even see your face. You've got this massive book. What are you reading? Uh, I, I I was looking at the spine covers and considering there's nothing about magic, I'm not actually pulling anything out. And then when he he says we can help, I'll just I'll give thumbs up as I keep looking at the books. Uh, roll a perception check for me. <laughs> oh my god, the rolls, the rolls! I think we might need to switch. That to is action. a that is a nat one. Natural one. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Um, no, you don't find any books uh, about any type of magic that uh, that you're aware of. Maybe there's a book here written in a language that you're not familiar with that could have some type of uh, arcane. I don't read halfling knowledge, so. but uh, I, 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 I was waiting for half a shelf of books to like fall out as he tried to pull out one and have a bit of a look at it. <laughs> I I was actually going to do the same thing, but I I just. Hey, we, we can make that happen. Do you want to make that happen? Yeah. That, that sounds pretty uh, accurate for the kind of awkward social interactions <laughs> that's happening right now. You, uh, you try to pull out. book damage. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. You try to pull out a book and like four or five like books and scrolls come tumbling out as you do so. And uh, uh, the... Uh, the <laughs> 
priest at the at the far end. So, Don't worry about that. We'll we'll take care of that. Please, uh, Archer, could you please take care of that? That's that's no problem. And she looks back towards you, uh, Ginger, and she steps down from the altar and makes her way. And as she's walking down the aisle, people are, you know, sort of stepped aside and made room for her to walk down in between the rows of pews. She says, We all reap what is sown. A flower blossoms when treated with love. And the faith and devotion to Shantaya, the humble folk in Stonewood have displayed, has delivered you unto us. I believe that you can help us. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in providence. And I believe Shantea has sent you to us to help us. She starts to speak a little bit louder so that everyone can hear what she's saying. To help us in these troubled times. And she turns back towards you, Ginger, and she holds out her hands, you know, gently. Um, she's dressed in like a simple flowing white gown and she's wearing like a crown of garland flowers she's holding yeah. her hand to you Ginge digs it and she just sort of like slips her hand in flits a little bit off like half a meter and she's like okay and just sort of like you know holds her hand out I guess because she's doing it she turns back towards the gathered crowd and she speaks once again. Good people of Stonewood, Shantea has delivered this blessing unto us because you have been faithful and you have been true. These good folk will deal with our troubles. You can all go home and rest easy now, knowing that the, uh, the things that have plagued our village of late will soon be over. Your children are safe. Mm. And she looks towards a, uh, a a woman, sort of, she's holding a, a, a young girl in her arms. Uh, it's a halfling woman, so she's quite short. She's holding like a, um, maybe just older than a toddler. Let's say five, six years old or something like that. And uh, the little girl has like a doll and she's clutching it and she has her head buried into her, her mother's chest and she says, your husbands will be safe, looking directly at this woman. So go home, get a nice rest. And in a few days time, this night will, will be over. Um, and like I said, she has this sort of commanding voice and uh, people start to file out of the church, still keeping their distance. Um, and a man makes his way over towards you, Kukulain, starts picking up the books, you know, eyeing you as he does so. Like, like he's, he's picking it up, but he's watching you as he's picking up and putting the books back in. So Just kind of softly in his mind, thank you. He drops the book, looks back towards the... Uh, the, uh, the the dwarven woman and he just shakes his head puts his hands up starts backing out uh, kind of confused what I did I'm just going to quickly just in case I pick something up with whatever's happening in the communications with them um, but just while I'm looking over the books could I do an arcana check just to see if there's anything magical here or possibly even in the church just try to get a, a quick feel for something and then see if it's just completely useless um well, I mean, you, you've spent a little time here now perusing the books while all this is happening. Um, I'll allow you to roll... Um, yeah, go ahead, roll an Arcana check. Uh, I'll tell you if there's anything magical. My um, metagaming-ish above table, I'm more so trying to see if I just pick up anything kind of magical in the church. Okay. Not looking for items, but just more so seeing if I accidentally feel that she was, like, doing any sort of weird commandy stuff with the... um. The people in the church. Okay, all right. Um, yeah. See if see if I accidentally notice that wall. I'm looking for a magical book. Uh, t twelve. Twelve. 
Um, you're not getting any auras uh, of uh, or, or any hints of magic. Um, so okay. that would probably lead you to conclude that this is just a respected uh, individual. People respect what she says. Um, you don't pick up any magic uh, in any of the books either. So okay, I sigh, walk back over towards um, Ginger and uh, and Jurgen. You see the woman clutching the babe to her breast as she as she leaves, um, and she 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 looks at. Um, I'm assuming Jurgen, you're 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 probably the the biggest. Of the uh, of the party, you probably stand the tallest just by a little bit, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think um, he's like seven foot something. I'm like six seven. So I don't know where I've written that down. Yeah, it might be on your character sheet somewhere. You may have actually just physically written it down. I don't know, but she... oh, here we go, seven foot six. Seven oh. foot six. You're you're. So you're he's significantly quite... taller than all of us, large... and considering yeah. I'm also in heavy armor, I'm probably standing pretty close to uh, eight feet. Yeah, she, um, there's something about the way that she looks at you when she walks out, specifically, you. I could give her a bow. Um, she picks up her pace as she, as she leaves. Just, any, anything you guys want to do as, as people are filing out? Um, I'm going to wander over to where they are, um, because I was, you know, hanging back a little bit. I'm just gonna sort of like look over at Doc and then I'm gonna um, look over to Ginger and then sort of like motion towards the people and then look back at her and just be like which she would she would take to mean we better be getting paid she holds up her hand for a second as the last of the people file out of the church. No, I'm, she... I'm doing that, that. That was to Ginger, not to... Oh, that's to, to Ginger. Okay, yeah. all right. Yep, sorry. Yep. I'll allow you to respond to that then, Ginger. Um, Ginger just sort of looks at him and just goes... Like, shakes her head and, like, mm -hmm. sort of just gives him, like, a knock-it-off sort yeah. of, like... I repeat in um, Ginger's five. mind, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, roll for initiative. It's a PvP action tonight. Let's just get um, this out of the way. <laughs> I would like to walk up to the uh, cleric uh, of this church, the, that lady, the dwarf, um, and just kind of, like, uh, reach my... Like, put my hands out asking for her hands... Like, obviously, I'm not physically asking. I'm not saying anything. I kind of just walk up silently and, like, put my hands together like that. She waits as the last people exit the church, and she closes the door behind them, and then you make your way over to her, and you hold out your hands, and she stops for a second, and she holds out her hands and puts her, hers on yours. You can feel calluses on her hands. I'm just going to basically telepath telepathically tell her that um, I mean no harm by this, but I just want to make sure that we can trust her. And uh, I'm going to cast Friends. Um, so there's no save involved. I just have advantage on um, persuasion checks. But at the end of the spell, one minute, um, they know that it's been cast. So they can seek retribution if uh, they feel used. They can seek violence if they're like a hostile creature. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to do that while I'm holding her hands and then okay. telepathically kind of ask her if she can explain to everyone here what the, she needs help with. She is calm as you speak to her telepathically. You can feel calluses on her hands, um, giving you an indication that, she, you know, maybe she hasn't always been uh, a person of the cloth. She says, yes. I'm sorry. Forgive me. My name is Sister Aldous. I am the de facto leader here in Stonewood. These people, they're, they're good folk. They're not the most sophisticated, but they're, they're good people. And they look toward, to, towards me for leadership. Now, as I was saying earlier, we've been having a spirit of trouble. I don't believe that Shantae has sent you to us. This was just 
good luck on my behalf. But the people, they need hope. They need something to believe in. And uh, I honestly believe, or I honestly hope as well, that you can be the ones that they can believe in, that you could uh, deliver us from the trouble that we've been having. Now, I, I look across each of your faces. You're strangers. You're obviously not from this land, but people of all shapes and sizes are welcome here in Stonewood, so I won't judge you. I won't judge for where you've been. She looks towards you, Kevor, or what you may have done in the past. All I ask is that you help us. Please. We're desperate. Inside. All right. <laughs> Roll yeah. Check for yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there on, on that as well. I only got a nine. Not amazing for me. Still not rolling well, guys. I got a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god I'm do we so need to dying. postpone this stream guys do we need to do this again on another night I, I know what I would like to do Sven All right. if, you, if, you'll, if you'll allow it okay I, like I to, will allow it I would like to ask her are you lying and do a persuasion check with advantage because of friends <laughs> <laughs> god oh god yeah. oh, okay okay go for it that's too small don't, don't, don't you love DMing for a player who's usually a DM yeah. oh my god we are uh, we're, oh, we're wow. a special bunch we know how to push the buttons and uh, pull the levers <laughs> Oh yeah, look, if she's lying God. to me, she deserves it. I, I got a four and a nine with my advantage, and I have a plus zero to charisma. <laughs> oh, dear. But, um, yeah. She looks towards you, and she, she chuckles for a second. She says, I have nothing to lie about. What would I gain by lying to you? I don't, right. I don't blame you for being somewhat suspicious. I'll turn back towards everyone. I'll turn towards um, Ginger and telepathically. Um, uh, what do you think? Um, and how does this tell, like, so um, this, this sort of back and forth work? Can I reply? No, no, no. Uh, so this no. is my um, psionic mind from being a gem dragon. I can telepathically okay. communicate um, to any creature that I can see within 30 feet. Um, we don't need to share um, any language, but they de they do need to at least comprehend one language. Um, but you can't repeat to me. I'm sending you messages. What if that language okay. is violence? Um, <laughs> and I just think that's how I can comprehend. Ginger <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, just sort of turns to him and like just very gently like shrugs her shoulders um I mean they're people in need if we left them here it wouldn't very much be fair after we know they're in trouble um I'll turn back towards her and give her a nod as well agreeing with Ginger's point she's looking back and forth between Kukulain and, and Ginger as you guys are having this telepathic conversation i'm sure there's like oh only my part's telepathic oh, only only your part's telepathic okay she, she, she can hear what ginger's saying um and she's looking back and forth as you guys are, uh, are talking to each other and she looks towards you Kukulain, and she says you're from a very far away away you have to can you teach that to me uh I'll telepathically tell her uh, I am not sure um, I was born with this um, but I'm definitely not used to these areas and used to being careful that being said what are we dealing with what do you need help with of course um, follow me she leads you guys uh, back up towards the altar where she was uh, standing in front of when, when you guys first entered the church and she leans down and she opens like a little little door a little latch she unlatches it and opens it up a little squeak yeah, as it opens she pulls out a, a crystal vial full of like a red liquid and a little uh wine glass and she pours herself a, a glass of what appears to be wine and she uh, she takes a sip she says, oh, 
after a long day of uh, trying to, to keep people calm, I can't tell you how good it is to have a, well, never mind. I guess I should tell you what it is that we've got going on here before you agree to anything. You see, a few ten day ago, some of our folk started going missing. I tried to organize a search, but quick, quickly many of the folk became too afraid to wander too far away from the village. Now, in the beginning, it was just people in the outskirts of town on their own, so no one really knew what was happening. Now, only last night... Uh, hold on one second. Um, Miss Bethewick's husband, who owns the Bethewick Orchard on the southeastern side of, uh, of our lovely village, he was, uh, he was kidnapped. And the only witness to what happened was his young daughter who was there at the time. Now, I haven't had much luck in coaxing out of her what, uh, what she saw. She's too afraid to talk, so I thought it would be best to give her a little bit of time, but people are scared. And uh, quite frankly, I, I'm at my wit's end. That is, until you walked in and I saw an opportunity. I, uh, hey. looking, looking all for you, I, I believe that at least some of you are, uh, are people of, of opportunity. She May we speak to our witness? Perhaps I could speak yeah. to her. I would be, you know, more than happy to, uh, to allow you to, to, to talk to them. They've, uh, gone down for the evening, so it's probably best to wait until the morning. She is young, after all. What is she, five years old now? Uh, I, I don't know exactly how much useful information you're going to get out of her. She was scared out of her wits from what it is that she witnessed. But uh, maybe if you're looking for answers, for clues as to what's happening, you might be able to find something at the Bethwood Orchid. You might be able to ask... Uh, young lass what she what she saw or did not see or perhaps you can find something else but that's uh I, I i leave that in your more than capable hands well i know it's dark but should we go have a look at this orchard yes. i'm thinking the same thing i think so i think we have a plan Everyone's just standing yeah. there with his arms crossed. What um? What exact time of day is it? Is a it good getting dark is or actually payment. dark? Yeah. It's it's dark now. Huh? Dark now. The, okay. the sun has uh, gone behind the the uh, the mountains, the mountain range that you guys would know as the Grey Skull Mountains. Oh, never mind. Okay. Um. Well, I'll telepathically um uh, say to her. I think we're all in agreement that we're happy to help. Obviously, like you said, some of us are people of opportunity, while others uh, are wanting to help. Um, so, in the mix, we'll do what we can to keep you all safe. But we would definitely like some sort of reparation after. Of and course. I'll take a moment to calm down, Kev, and say, "Come on, we need to do this for the good deed, Kev." Mm. I'm sort of like eye the bottle of wine. She holds up a finger for a second and she leans back down. She pulls out another quite dainty glass goblet and pours another glass of wine and she holds it out to you. It might look very quite. small in your big hands, but uh, she's yeah, not right. sort of sort of clumsily take it, nod, turn around so she so like my back's to her, pull my mask down, gulp it, pull the mask back up to her and hand it back, nod, and then like turn back to the group and just be like. <laughs> she takes the glass back off you and she's like this is more of a kind of sip uh, you know what never mind <clears throat> she uh, puts it back under the uh, under the way she got it from and uh, so you'll help us then I think so 
Of course. I believe I, it is the right thing to do. I I, I nice. appreciate your 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 good nature. I, I I I perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps this is a blessing from Shantaya herself. Only the gods would really know. Of course, I can uh, put together a reward uh, for you. The church will, uh, is willing to, to, to put some gold pieces aside. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure that the good people of Stonewood, though we're not the largest of cities, we don't have much trade or anything like that. We are uh, we're quite well off. Uh, we're, we're well to do. We, uh, we, we, we grow a lot of... Uh, apples and, and, and crops and, and that sort of thing and it's quite a, a lush verdant sort of area where we're quite lucky so we can we can put something together for you uh, if you wish everyone just points at the wine gives a thumbs up nods turns around and walks out <laughs> she gives you as, a, as, as, the others might be able to pick, I don't know if she'll be able to figure that but the others will probably be able to figure out that, that means he's happy to get paid in wine I'll translate that. <laughs> I believe Kev's just saying he wouldn't mind doing it for some wine. Oh, of course. Uh, we, uh, she leans in close to you, Jürgen, and she says, it's, uh, wine is a little bit of a weakness of mine. I, I, I might be guilty of hoarding some of the better stuff for myself. Tell your friend he'll be more than welcome uh, to, to, to join me in tapping some of the finer goods uh, if you do this thing for us. Uh, of course, if you do this, we might even uh, get the whole town together, have a bit of a celebration. Um, Kukulain's just going to tell it back to say, um, oh, uh, Bono has said that he'll discuss the terms of our, my reparation. Um, so I'll let you discuss that with him. And uh, kind of just stand up and start getting ready to go around. And she Turn away. stands there. Um, sort of, and she, she looks around and she looks towards you, Ginger. She's like, uh, which one was Bono? Sorry, you, you haven't told me your names. Is it the big one? Uh, no, I'm not exactly I am... sure what he means by that either. Uh, Christian, why do you, why, do you want to explain what do you what what you meant by that? Because I know what you meant, but uh, I want to see if you. So, uh, in, as another Irish folk hero, Bono is my imaginary friend. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot about that. Ah, uh, see, um, it Ginger just sort of looks and has a very active imagination. She's like, oh yes, that's his friend. Um, well, look, to be honest, we're not quite sure what's going on there, but I'm sure he'd be happy just to be paid. Um, but I, however, would like to know more about your goddess, if you don't mind sharing. Um, and she just sort of flies up to the stained glass window. Obviously, it's quite high and gets quite close to the picture. She's like, this is very good art, by the way. Uh, she takes a step back and she, she motions towards the picture, of course. Um, Shantaya, the great mother. Uh, she she is the goddess of uh, of, of of what is she the goddess of of of, 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 of agriculture. Um, this church has been here oh for a very long time. The uh, the, the stained glass window though uh, that's rather new. Um, we've uh, in in years long ago there was there was more trouble in this region, but that's that's over now. It's been peaceful for quite some time. And uh, I I had that uh, commissioned. I'm gonna have a look Beautiful. at it and see if it's familiar. Um, would that be insight? Uh, that would be a uh, religion check. Religion, okay. Religion. I've got a plus zero for that. So let's see what we roll. Eleven. Uh, 11 this is a fairly common religion so I would say that is enough I would say the DC as, yeah. uh, 8 or 10 uh, so yeah you, you you recognize this uh, image it's a it's a woman and she's dressed in like white gowns she sort of has this air of, uh, of not only femininity but like strength and she's uh, she's holding like a large scythe uh, in one hand she has an apple in her other hand um, and all this is, is depicted in this beautiful multicolored 
stained glass window, which during the day would probably cast quite a nice sort of uh, rainbow of colours um, throughout this hall, but it's night time, so, you know, it's not as dramatic as it would be. We... Well, I think on that note, um, we ought to be getting to that orchard. Would you mind giving us direction? Of course. You can't miss it. It's the, uh, it's the last orchard on the way out of town. If you head out of the church and you follow the road towards the left and then left again, just keep going. You'll see some farms on your, on your, on your right-hand side uh, just as you're about to leave town. Betterwick Orchard uh, is on the left-hand side. It has a sign. Uh, it is uh, written in halfling, so I, d I don't know if you speak halfling, but um, you'll see there's a depiction of an apple uh, that's been cut in half, and uh, that is uh, Betterwick Orchard. Uh, please do keep in mind that they've had uh, quite an ordeal of late, and seeing you walking around the orchard at night uh, could frighten them. Uh, so please do be, uh, what's the, what's the word I'm looking for? Discreet, if you're going to go there, uh, now. Um, otherwise we have, a, a lovely tavern in town. You probably passed it on the way in. It's called the, the, the Prickly Patron. Uh, don't mind the barkeep. He's, uh, he's a big man. Uh, almost as big as you are, she points towards, uh, um, Jürgen, uh, Doc Hovel. Um, but uh, sounds like someone on my level. He's a he's a gentle giant. He really is. Uh, you 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 get to know him if you if you go there. He does like to partake of his own uh, of his own drink, but he knows how to handle it. So just try not to get him started. Uh, is all I'm saying. And sort of as she finishes that, Ginger just sort of. I can see you have quite a bit of authority in this town. Um, just a suggestion, of course, but um, I would recommend that the people lock their doors and obviously prepare for the worst at night since this creature is obviously hunting at night. Yes, so, uh, would, uh, I, perhaps I don't think you need to be worried uh, the curfew? too much about that. Uh, people have been... Uh, Locking up quite tight uh, ever since folks started disappearing. They're all, uh, they're, they're, they're quite on edge. They're good people, but uh, they're, they're just scared. Um, I guess we start heading. Yeah. Look at the orchard. Heading, uh, looking for this sign with the apple on it. Yes. Right. Or do we want to take a short rest? Uh, I, don't, I mean, we I don't, have been traveling. I don't think there's anything we really need to get back. Okay, sweet. I would say, I mean, if you're going to stay up for many, many hours, uh, at some point we're going to look at rolling constitution uh, saves to see if anyone becomes exhausted, but you've, you've got a little while before that starts happening. Because you have been yeah. traveling. I think what our plan we... is just to head to the orchards Check. and just investigate. Yeah, and, and after that we can rest. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Yeah, you can do that. Okay. Tell you right now, this is going to be at least a two-parter, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> you follow her directions, you head out of the church. Um, you can just see uh, in the town square, it's still, you know, it's only early evening, so you can still see the lights coming from out of people's windows. You can see the, uh, the light coming from the prickly patron, like there's inviting warm glow of a probably you know a crackling fireplace um, and you head outside the moon is quite large so it's going to be dim light conditions uh, for the time being for those that you can see in the dark uh, you can see in like as, as it were bright light does everyone have uh, dark vision I no. don't believe I would no, I think you might, you might. I do not. Oh. Where do we find that? Uh, just know. First page of your character sheet underneath your passive perception and all that. 
I have it at 60 feet. Alright, so... Uh, I don't think I have dark vision. Kevrol has dark vision. No one else does, by the looks. Dark vision. Alright. No. Um, so, keep that in mind. If you're doing perception checks and that kind of stuff, it's going to be... I knew I should have picked me. a light spell. With disadvantage, unless... Oh, I have a light spell. You light a torch. I have a light spell. That's actually what I was going to say. As we start heading towards the orchards, I would like to pull out the torch I have, which will last an hour, and uh, start searching for clues as we as we start arriving. All right. All right we, we, are you guys going to pass the tavern from the church on the way to the orchards? Uh, no, I was thinking we were going to be going that lower street probably, but I guess we're still going to that yeah. intersection, which kind of comes right next to the tavern. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I don't, like, I'm, like, keeping in mind, I left a little bit ahead of you guys, so I've been kind of waiting on the roof of the tavern. So I will draw, um, which direction you're going to go in. So with the brush, you're going to head outside, and then you're going to hang a left, and then you're going to continue on past a, um, a two-story, what looks to be some type of warehouse with a, uh, a, uh, another sign sort of hanging, um, RPG style uh, above the door uh, that has Delorious uh, goods and wares written on it. You're going to continue on past these farms, uh, and when you reach there, uh, you can see there's a, a wooden arch uh, with a you know waist high wooden fence that runs around this orchard. So obviously as they pass by, I'll fall in with them just quietly. I rolled a 19 for stealth as I left the church, by the way. Uh, yes, and people will uh, have a minus five uh, to their passive perception in, in, in the darkness. But as you guys are uh, traveling uh, Kukulain, you have the torch lit. You can hear maybe as you pass by one of the houses, you can see someone sort of uh, leaning in the doorway, smoking a pipe, and as he sees you guys walking by, he sort of takes a step inside and closes the door. You can hear a lock. <laughs> um, well, as we start getting closer, um, it's already still on myself, but I'm just going to use a second level spell slot to cast uh, Long Strider again, targeting um, both uh, Ginger and Jurgen. Um, I'm guessing Kevrol's probably out of my line of sight. Um, I'm, I'm also super fast already, so it's all good. Yeah, so it just gives you an extra 10 t feet to your movement. Um, just so we can investigate a little bit quicker and get this sorted. All right. Um, yes. So you see that sign. Um, it's written in half halfling, so you, you, you can't read it. But you know the uh, the engraving of an apple that's been cut in half is sort of gives it away. This is Bethewick Orchard. You can see there's a small pathway that leads up to a uh, small single-story um, sort of rustic. Uh, cabin, um, but it'd be still quite nice for a, for a small town like this, multi-roomed. A lot of the times in the past, it would just be like one big single room where everyone sort of stays. This is multi-room, so you can tell that they're quite well off uh, in this village. Um, and off the path to the left, you can see just rows and rows of uh, what appear to be. Uh, apple trees um, their leaves turn in like a, a bright pink or they you would be able to see that the leaves are turning bright pink were at daytime so um I'll uh, kind of telepathically talk towards um, probably Jürgen first and just mention um uh, I guess we should handle how we usually handle bounty hunting trips and these sort of contracts. Um, do you want to call your friend Kevro? Uh, you two can head off and investigate in one direction, and myself and Ginger will head off in the other. Okay. Are you sure the two of you will be safe? Uh, yes, we're both. Um, uh, so I'll um, like glisten my back where there's two gems on each of my shoulder blades. Um, and I also have the ability to fly as well for a short period of time. So if need be, um, we'll easily be able to get back to both of you. Man, okay. Kukulain is so fabulous. I feel like he's <laughs> right out of... Uh, 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 what's that band called where they always wore the helmets all the time? Uh, Daft Punk? 
Daft Punk. I feel like you're out of a Daft Punk music video. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we, we should be okay. All right. Okay. Um, well, let's split up and look and look around. So we're splitting the party. Um, a couple of you. Always a great start. <laughs> head towards the uh, the northern end uh, of the orchard, and at the end of the orchard, you can see it opens up into like a more like a, a a vegetable sort of garden, tilled earth. You can see some cabbages growing in there and that kind of thing. Um, and the other two, uh, I'm assuming you're gonna like walk through the rows of uh, of apple trees and uh, see what you can find in there. Probably sounds like the best bit. All right, so let's start with the with the two. Um, I'm assuming that's going to be uh, Ginger and Kukulain. Uh Well, look, I, I'm just going to say, like, I'm, I'm hanging back, so I can't really say this um, to you, but me and him are both built like tanks. It might be better if we separated. Well, I just figured because be you guys fine. were um, speaking, uh, somehow communicating previously. Uh, he, he, we just know each other pretty well. I, okay. I can I can talk if I need to. I just don't unless I absolutely need to. Oh, that's my favorite kind of character. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, why don't we leave it like this anyway, just to see if something fun happens? Yep. Yeah, all right. Let's do, let's do <laughs> it. And we can fly. So yeah. if we need to get the heck out of Dodge, we can. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So the so the the heel tank and the other tank both go off on their own and leave the squishy guys to go and explore something else <laughs> <laughs> with no healing. This is, this is gonna be fun. Oh, I can heal. I oh, can, can heal wounds. I actually okay, just cool. realized just going through my character sheet. I'm like, oh, look at that. Okay. Good. Uh, as we're walking and I've got the torch um, as kind of our main source of oh you've also got probably light cast on yourself Ginger, I was going to telepathically ask you Jam, oh can you uh, help me look for any sort of clues I guess um, just uh, seeing if she can give me the help action without metagaming yes. yeah. I was going to say, I was going to get into the mechanics so I roll uh, an investigation, uh, if it's above a 10 you can, you can help him You've got a light source, so no disadvantage. You can just do that. Uh, 14. Let's have a look. 14. Yes, you successfully assist. Um, 23. Oh, the 23 is for assisting. Uh, So you can roll that again. Not 20. I won't argue with that. Uh, 14 again. Uh, Jesus, um... All right, fourteen again. Um, I feel like I need yeah. to give you something for that natural twenty. So you're uh, walking through this um, this this apple orchard. Um, it's quite eerie at night time. The uh, your light spell and Kukulain's torch are casting these long shadows, and. Uh, it lends us uh, a sense of eeriness to these trees. As you walk along the rows, back, up, and back, up, back, and you don't really find anything out of the ordinary. You see signs of, uh, of foot traffic, uh, of halflings. You can see that there's a ladder that's, that's been left out. Uh, and uh, you find... Um, a maybe lying somewhere you find hmm, what what can I give you guys uh, that would be uh, that would be fun ooh it's a good uh, it's a good question um, you, you find uh, a, a, a tool chest um, sort of um, sitting at the base of one of the uh, one of the apple trees Um, I'm guessing you probably find a ginger while I'm still looking around with the torch. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't normally give something like this for an assist roll, but hey, this is a one shot. Let's go nuts. Yeah. Um, Ginger just sort of turns to him and is like, hey, I found a chest. Um, I don't really want to touch it. Um, It never really ends well when I go to... (laughs) Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I um I cast gust on uh, the chest. Um, you cast uh gust on the chest. It's like a a small chest about yay big. Um, just 
flat on top, you cast Gust, it sort of moves a little bit and you can see there's a iron, um, like a small padlock, no, not real big, and it's sort of tick, 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 tick. Okay, I'm going to walk over to her um, and instead I'm going to use my second level spell, uh, Knock, and pull out my wand and touch it against the lock and magically unlock it. Okay, a couple of things are going to happen. Oh no. No, I'm joking. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> and the padlock just sort of, boop, and it falls off into the uh, into the dirt at the base of this tree. It's unlocked. Okay. Like, um, we're all kind of bogue and booby traps their tools. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, um, and a mimic eats you, um, and we're rolling a new character. <laughs> No time, it's a one shot. Uh, just telepathically to Ginger, yeah. oh, um, it, it should be okay to open now, and I'll stand up and keep looking around for clues as um, she's handling that, even though obviously we've already done the check, just still investigating the orchid. Yep. Okay, sweet. So um, Ginger just walks up to the chest and just looks in there. You uh, you open it up, it's like... As you, uh, as you open it inside, you can see it's like filled with... Um, straw or maybe like sawdust um, and you can see um, poking out of the top you can see a couple of um, corks just sort of sticking out um, and then there's three of them and there's one that sort of seems to be shoved into the side okay so instantly being very curious Ginger just picks up all of them and like reads all the labels, I guess, if she can. Uh, yeah, so you can see the labels uh, on the first three that, that you grab out. Um, it says um, Bethewick Orchard Cider. That's on the first three. And, but when you grab the last one, you pull it out, um, you can tell that it, this is something different. This is a, uh, a potion of healing. Oh, okay. Hey. There you go. I will take that. Um, I'd say um, um, Bethewick Orchard uh, Cider is actually quite well respected in the region, so they're probably worth, you know, five gold pieces uh, each for these uh, for these bottles of uh, cider. So, you know, damn, Daniel. Uh, um, I can think of someone who so, would enjoy that. Yeah, so can I. <laughs> um, so Ginger just sort of. Obviously, being a fairy and having wings, she does not have a backpack, so she sort of just slides it into, like, the satchel, and she's, like, pops up from the chest, and she's like, I found booze. Did you say that loudly? Um, not mentioning the health potion. Um. <laughs> uh, I'll give you the, the thumbs up. <laughs> um, telepathically. <laughs> Lovely. Maybe we should keep looking for clues. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to our uh, our other two intrepid heroes. Um, you guys uh, come out to uh, what appears to be like a, a sort of like a vegetable garden, but it's not it's not just a garden because it's it's quite large, so it's not just for this house. They probably sell uh, their wares and, and and stuff like that as well. So you know, it's a uh, forty feet across and a hundred feet long or something like that. I don't know how much that is in meters, so don't quote me on that, but. Uh, Five by three. What do you want to do? Um, well, I'm staying as hidden as I possibly can, obviously. Well, uh, I've got a candle. I... Hey. Oh, you go. You go. Sorry. No, you're right. Okay, I've got a candle. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think I might use that for some improvised improvised uh, lighting. Okay. All right. That gives you all like right. five feet of uh, of bright light. I think. Yeah, okay. so, so so he he can barely see, obviously. <laughs> so um yeah, I'm I'm gonna look around and and look for anything weird, out of the ordinary, whatever, but try and stay hidden while I do it. And you you don't have dark vision or I do. You do. All right. Um, so yeah. I'll, I'll probably get the get the roll from from you, Kevro. Roll uh, mm -hmm. an investigation check. All right. Do you need me to re-roll stealth, or are we just sticking with the nineteen I rolled on the way out of the uh, chat? I'll carry over the nineteen for now, unless yeah. you want to right, so... roll it again. No, it's fine. Get higher. Um, investigation. Uh, investigation. Said? Yep. All right. Six. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're doing great. 
Uh, so proud. You find some potatoes. <laughs> That's it. You find you find right. potatoes. Uh, you don't find yeah, anything uh, else out of the ordinary. Just. The fact that you found potatoes at an orchid, that's pretty amazing. Stop it, Christian. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Don't um, ruin my I, fantasy. Um, they I go apples ignore... and potatoes. That's it. I, can, I completely <laughs> ignore the potatoes. Um, actually, wait. Wait. What would I roll to tell if I know that you can make alcohol out of potatoes? Uh, that would be uh, an intelligence. Uh, intelligence? Just straight yeah. intelligence? Oh, yeah, straight intelligence. Um, yeah, no proficiency. I'll, I'll <laughs> no, allow, no, I, I would allow you to know. add your proficiency if you were proficient in alcohol or something like that. Or, you, not, or with so. brewer's kit. Um, but no. Yeah. Um, no. You, you see some potatoes uh, and you're like, ooh, I can make some chips out of these. Um, fun fact about potatoes. Um, the... Uh, the word for potato in Dutch is art apple, uh, which means earth apple. So there, oh, Christian. Cool. See, they grow apples and earth apples. So get out of here. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you okay. also have blue apples, apples and red apples and all the different uh, strawberries and blueberries. Just everything's an apple of different varieties. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, um... right. yeah, no, it's and true. The, the right... uh, an orange and the Russian is... word for earth apple is vodka? Uh, uh, an orange in Dutch is, uh, is a sinus apple, uh, which just means uh, citrus apple. So, <laughs> yeah. easy way now to what, identify things. What's our lovely friend Jürgen doing? Uh, so, uh, you can add three potatoes to your inventory, but uh, that's, I'm afraid, all you come away with. You know what? I'm, I'm doing I'm still going to be looking around at the ground and on the around me to see if I actually spot right. anything I'll tell you candle. what, I'll get you to roll that a candle's not much so I will yeah. uh, get you to roll it with disadvantage just because it's it's candlelight it's night time I feel yep. like that sh is fair I think so so that is and you're in heavy armor perception uh, investigation investigation, okay you've perceived the farm and now you're investigating it and it's an 11. Uh, an 11. Uh, 11 me. And can I get you to roll it again because it's with disadvantage? Uh, yes, oh. yes. Sorry, I'm fidgeting. Don't fidget here. Ooh, three. <laughs> he found more potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you found... Uh, <laughs> you find a potato that, uh, that Kevrol missed earlier. So you can add a potato to your inventory. So together you have four Woo. potatoes. It's a pretty yeah. good haul. Four potatoes on a healing potion. That's not too bad. We are. And you guys, um, uh, you, you sort of, uh, you've scoured the orchard uh, as much as you can uh, in the darkness, and you guys sort of meet up again in the middle. Uh, what do you want to do? Uh, show them. Oh, actually, yeah. I'll like just ask, uh, do you guys find anything at all telepathically to one of you? Mm. No, we found potatoes. Get Rob pulled one out and holds it out. Uh, I'll, I'll point towards Ginger. Oh, um, Ginger turns to um, Kevro and she's like, I have a gift for you. And she pulls out the cider and she's like, We found booze. And I figured you'd be interested. And she like shoves the booze to him. She's awesome. like, I don't drink, so it's yours. Okay, and, um, and I like, I like, I grab those and like put two in my pack and like rummage through and pull out all three potatoes and shove them, shove them at you, like almost, she almost will take that them. gladly. <laughs> I was then, looking um, for an excuse to have a plant, so, so take she like the potatoes takes potatoes out and she's of like, your inventory a worthy trade. Yeah. And put them uh, in your inventory, Grace, and uh, you can put the cider in your inventory. Who knows? I am a, only like two that. ciders are going in my inventory. I'm drinking the other. Okay, all right. You smash oh, the my... cider. Um, ooh, a whole bottle of cider. Oh, You're a big man. No, you should be fine. Roll a con save. Yeah, I'm like 300 pounds, six foot something. I can roll a con save or check if you want. DC 8. DC 8? Yep. Save or check? Um, uh, I don't give a stuff. Save is fine. Uh, con save. 25, natural 20. <laughs> um, rock You're solid. fine. You feel more yeah. sober Nothing than you did happened. before, but in a good way. Um, <laughs> you become more charismatic. Um, you get, oh, that's uh, good. I need it. You get a plus one to your charisma for the next uh, two hours. Oh, yeah. 
Well, it's still not going to change my modifier. Oh, uh, well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my charisma's <laughs> eight. All right, fine. You get a plus two to your charisma for the next two hours. Uh, guys, oh, no. I am not encouraging drinking at all. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Have it. Have it. You're not gonna. You're not gonna need it. Come on, get out of here. But you can have you're it. Right. Uh, I guess we all should head back to the um the tavern then. Yes, perhaps that would be wise. Is, is all you guys here? Because I only spoke to Ginger, so you just hear. Yes, that would be wise. <laughs> what would be wise? If we should start going. <laughs> I imagine this might uh, this might have caused issues in the past. It's just ginger. Like Sounds it. like it. <laughs> um, yeah. So as I say that, and she says that would be wise. I just start walking past uh, the other two. And ginger just starts like she lifts off the ground a little bit and just like follows him, ready to go. All right, heading back. Sorry, to I missed the... that. I was drinking. I was drinking cider. What's going on? We are no. going to the tavern. Okay. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we start heading there um, to find a place to stay for the night. All right, awesome. Um, I will. Uh, I'll tell you what. We're almost at hour number two. Let's go for a really short break, guys. And when we come back, we're going to find out what happens at the tavern. I'm sure there's not going to be a bar brawl with that plus two Hope to Kevrol's charisma. I'm sure you'll be able to talk down any. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I've actually got pressures. calm emotion as a uh, level two spell, so there's that as well. There you go, you live forever. All right, guys, we're going to go for a quick break. If you're watching live, please uh, stick with us, and we'll be back in uh, what five minutes or something like that, and we'll get straight back into the action. Yes. Stick with us. There's uh, mm. there's a lot of fun things coming up, ladies and gentlemen. You're not gonna you're not gonna want to miss it. See you soon. It's not just apples and.